Hey guys, welcome to Love, Good, and Freedom with Adrian Duarte. So this week's episode is gonna be weird or something special or whatever. And it's mostly gonna be more of my vulnerable side since we've been talking about digging deeper, looking at the experiences that we've had and learning from it. So I'm gonna take like the reins from here on and I'm gonna be more of like go with the flow of the thoughts and the ideas that comes in my head. But I will just show you the structure. I'll be telling some experiences that changed my life all in all entirely. And I will close it with a poem that I made and explain it. Or I'll explain the poem before I end the poem or the, the podcast with the poem. So, um, well, we can talk about like events in my life that led me to be who I am right now and the things that I've learned so far and the things that I would always cherish. Okay, so I would love to begin with 2018. So 2018 was an eye-opening year for me. It was a year of growth, immense growth, if I may say. So 2017, I went to the States. I stayed there for a while, from 2017 to May of 2018. And with the, with the whole duration of the stay, I was able to make friends in New York, LA, I was really able to connect with people and I was like able to um, expand the knowledge and the cultures that I've known for the rest of my life or most of my life. So it was great. I learned a lot from the States. I I tried a lot of things. I met good friends and I still, uh, oops, and I still keep in touch with them. But, you know, um, the things that I greatly valued with the way I stayed in the States was it it really brought out my confidence in speaking and it really was able to show me like the different cultures of the world, especially when I was in New York, when I was staying in New York. Um, I've got a couple of friends that was with me. We went to museum dates, park dates. We just, you know, had fun. We um, ate at parks, ate at good food places and whatever, and even saw like the nitty gritty of little parts of New York where people don't really go to. And it was beautiful. New York was a beautiful experience for me. <clears throat> it made me feel liberated. It made me feel happy about myself in most of its aspects, especially with all the insecurities that I've been having with myself. Growing as a gay kid and person, I was extremely flamboyant. I wasn't really like the ones to not keep that I'm gay. I'm, oh, it's so obvious that I'm gay. And in New York, I didn't feel any much different. I didn't feel discriminated upon for being this because I don't even get the looks here, like the looks there when I speak, when I do things on my own, when I do my own shit. Um, I don't get to see the judgment in some people's eyes or actually most people there. They don't really care who I was, what I do. But when you try to talk to them, people actually respond nicely strangers are really quite nice some of them are like you really you know yeah how are you doing great life's great whatever and i was able to learn to cultivate my confidence in speaking up especially with random people and it taught me a lot those are one of the things that i would actually love to keep honing because you know being a people person it's very important to connect with people on a you know a good level um, another thing that I learned about um, being in the States was keeping connections as well. Like, I have got, I've made friends of different cultures there and we've been talking, we still catch up with each other and filling, on, filling in on our lives, you know, and it's really great. It's really expanding your world in a whole lot of sense. So that was the first lesson. That was the first thing. And the next lesson that it taught me, like 2018 or the life that I chose, was patience. Uh, after going, th after coming home from the states, I decided to like pursue a an internship to go back to New York. Apparently, the credentials that I've had and things that I, you know, have already are not equipped to actually go on a internship in the the states or in New York. So I was thinking of like, you know, doing a job first that is related to the course or the, the internship that I want to apply for and come back. So I did. I But I was completely impatient. I was nonstop complaining about being back here, how I, how I want to be there again so much. 
and it clouded my vision. It actually destroyed some of the relationships I had, and it was a dark moment in life, I guess, because I was really too selfish to see other people around me and to see the blessings that I have that's with me, and was really just focused on getting that something that I want. And yeah, it just felt bad because. You know, I, I lost people too, and I lost relationships then. And realizing at the end of the day, it was me. I became toxic. I became unpleasant to be with. And that's okay. It's a part of life I have to learn. Um, so that was one impatience. And then I applied for a job. So um, I went through a lot of different jobs before I found the things that I want to do for myself. And I d- tried a marketing job. It taught me how to be in corporate and deal with adults and do things in a very high-pressured, high-paced manner. And I decided to resign because the company wasn't really up to par with what I am expecting them like to provide me. And I was on the other end providing the services they need from me. But it didn't feel like we were having that good exchange of I learn from the company and they learn from me or something like that. But Yeah, so I decided to stop and resign from that company. And then I took a chance on teaching. You know, I just banked on the idea of I'm good with the kids. Maybe I could, you know, learn to hone this, like, these skills that I need to be a teacher. And I did my demo a day after my resignation from the company I was in was effective. And... It went well. And the week after, I started with my new job as a preschool teacher in Cambridge. And up until now, I still teach there. And I've never been so happier in my life. Mm. So to backtrack a little bit before I got the jobs and before everything else, I also went through like a situation where I had to come out to my father. So I told you again and again that I am actually extremely flamboyant effeminate whatever that is and it's so obvious that I'm gay but there were troubles with my dad where he is not really you know trying to see the truth in it and he's been denying the the fact that I was gay or maybe because he hasn't heard the truth from me and then I had a situation where this far off affiliated whatever she's the girlfriend of my dad's cousin that I the backstory there is I met her in New York and I toured her around. Since I was in New York, I was my own person. I I was just so open to her about myself and my sexuality. And I really didn't hide it anymore because, well, I haven't been hiding my sexuality for quite a while. It's just my father is just having a hard time to like accept it back then. But I never even tried to tell him the truth. So there was a situation where they all had a night out. And this girl had the nerve and the gall to tell my father that I was gay. And then my dad called me crying and upset. And I remember that night being like one of the worst phone calls I've ever had. And he was asking me if I was gay. And I wasn't answering because I couldn't lie to him and lie to me and myself up front and deny the fact that I am gay because I am. So, yeah. And from then on, we didn't talk for like at least two months and things got a little, you know, over the top when we had to make the talk and the decision. But at the end of the day, we decided to work on our relation to relationship together. And I'm happy. I am really grateful that we're working on whatever it is between us, me and my father. And he's been showing great signs of progress. And he's accepted me. And I love him. I love my dad. I love my family. All I could say, I love them so much. I rarely say that, and I'm going to say it in public now. If he's going to listen to this, Dad, I love you. But, yeah. uh, Other than that, so yeah, that was one of the lessons that I learned. That some things will happen, if even if it's not planned, even if it's not in my timeline, it is going to happen. When it's going to happen, we talked about growth. We talked about this in the previous podcast. But, yeah, there is growth in this one. I was able to fix my relationship with my family, be able to talk to him more, be more vocal about my emotions and feelings and thoughts rather than just keeping it because, you know, afraid of letting go of a secret that I've been holding from him for like the whole time. So, yeah, aside from the job, 
aside from the the father thing and the family and coming out I also got a lot of things that came ahead um, I told you I've lost relationship and I was in one and that person apparently was subconsciously moving on from me when I was in the States we, we did an, you know, an LDR kind of thing we held on to that and I came back thinking that the things between us were the same but apparently it wasn't visions of our future were different things that we want for each other are also different any- and we were not seeing eye to eye anymore apparently he fell in love with somebody else or infatuated whatever you, you want to call it and then cheated on me for like twice and I was mad initially it taught me the lesson of forgiveness realizing that you're not the perfect partner and realizing things that you've done wrong the whole past relationship as well I'm not the best partner I can admit to that and attest to that but I learned so much from this relationship and I cried it out I cried my eyes out for this but you know and I grew so much so after that that was like the last part of my 2018 I had to know this like a day before my birthday you know to put the the sugar and the sprinkle into my 2018 it had to end in that way but yeah I'm thankful because I had I figured it out before 2019 hits the anthem of my year was thank you next and you know I'm not bitter about my my ex anymore and I'm not bitter about what happened the whole year but when the time came that I had to look back on my 2018 I was like in shock I was like wow I've been through so much and this better be like good character development coming up for me you know and it did so I, so I started my new career and out with the old in with the new I started with my new career and I started a relationship with myself more so myself you know like I made after breaking up after the whole relationship ended I was with I was surrounded with friends I was surrounded with love you know I was surrounded by, by my family friends workmates my kids to be exact I am surrounded and filled with love. I was abundant of love that I thought I lost. And yeah, looking back, when I look at it now, it was such a good feeling to realize that my friends, my friends that I call my family now, um, really came through. You know, they heeded my call. They talked to me whenever... They visit my house when I'm sad. I remember watching Sex in the City all together because I was broken. I was, I went to a beach all alone. I went to La Union solo trip just to see if I could do it. And I just, I did. Um, I met great friends in La Union. Uh, yeah, after that, I also went, like, we, I celebrated a year spending birthdays the birthdays of my friends with them and I was grateful because it made us stronger it made us closer to each other and I love them to bits for that and I even also had another trip with La Union with like friends of mine that are also broken hearted it was like a roller coaster and I even recall making a poem about in the company of broken hearts and it's funny because the poem was about fixing each other up and it doesn't really have to be romantic and it doesn't really have to be that but it was like the friends and the people around you so I learned that and I was able to express myself through my words through poems and I remember writing this one massive poem and performed it those are two things that I tried I I dared to be myself I dared to be like the person I've wanted myself to be and it was great amazing in the course of self-development, I also tried to study teaching units to further my knowledge and my skills for teaching. It's because it became my passion. It's something I really love doing. And up until now, I have been working on it. And soon, I'll study again for early childhood education. And it's something I'm excited about. So I hope you can hear the passion in my voice and the the happiness that I've had now like thinking and recalling this is such a good exercise for me to do I am happy that I was able to share it with you 
on a stage like this. Um, yeah, and up until now, I've also learned through 2019 naman, was mostly there are so many things in this world that's not really mostly always about me. You know, I should realize that friends and other people have things going on for them and then I don't really have to revolve their, our relationship as human beings to myself alone. And it's beautiful. I just, I'm, I'm thankful for my friends. Like, shout out to these friends of mine who really kept me going the whole time that I needed it. I can't thank them enough and I can't stress the love that I have for them. 2019 opened my eyes to the the abundance of love that I can get from people around me and I could give to people around me. You know, it changed my perspective of wanting to be in a relationship, wanting to be accepted, wanting to belong all the time with someone. But it's not necessarily the the only thing that you have to do. You have to belong with yourself. You have to know that being yourself and your authentic self is enough and that the people around you if they are really truly your friends, your people, your family, they would accept you 100% for who you are. And whether you're too embarrassed to accept your mistake, to actually confess to your mistakes and you tell them, oh, you know what, I feel this and it's a mistake, they wouldn't badger you to be like, I knew it. No, they're going to be like, sure, okay. But they'll tell you when you're becoming toxic, they'll tell you when you're becoming such an ass. So, yeah. That, those are the lessons that I've learned. And one of the key points that I enjoyed during my time last year was also the never-ending growth of relationships that I was able to develop with other people. I was able to be open, more open to meeting new friends, less of attaching myself and wanting meaning from each relationship I have. But it's mostly making friends, making things out of whatever you have. And it's great. And I capped the year off with a performance of a poem that, you know, designated or actually that encapsulates all that I felt. And I wrote this poem at Fully Booked BGC. Fully Booked BGC Starbucks. I was waiting for a night out to go to Nectar the first time I would go to Nectar. And I wrote it down. It was, it was like a wave of emotions that came down on me that made me feel so great and happy that I was able to move on from the things that I've been through. So, I will perform that in front of you. This title of my poem is Utter. So, Utter is a poem that, you know, again, encapsulates what I've been through, how I felt, and how the things that I've went through or the process of the thoughts that I've had throughout this journey of self-discovery of life of whatever so this is utter i utter the words happy slowly learning the curves of how my mouth shaped the words i want to be happy it was a chapter in my book of life that seemed too dark to ever have happiness again so i utter the word hope Hope that I wish filled my heart and mind with the passing of the seasons, where my heart braved the drought to when my eyes were filled with rivers of my own tears. I mumble the words, I hope to be happy. I picked up the fragments of my sadness and brought it everywhere, unconsciously leaving these fragments in places where my soul felt peace even just for a second. I then utter the words, I want to be happy. I wiped the tears off my face. I stopped pitying myself. I looked up and gave myself a pat on the back, thanking myself for always trying to go on even when sadness hits me on days I least expected. Days became brighter. Laughter once again filled my life. The joy in my heart starts to feel more genuine. I felt good about myself. Now I smile while I walk past thousands of strangers. I utter the words, I, I think I'm finally happy. Singing to the songs that lift my spirits, spending time doing things that nurture my soul. I find myself in a solemn place, a peace I longed to feel, no longer craving for one's attention. 
and again my heart no longer flinches when memories of you flow back in. I look back and no longer feel this thing. I write this now in this moment in time with a smile and a grateful heart. I am finally happy. And bow and scene utter. I reading this again makes me feel all the emotions that I've had writing this and it was beautiful to share it with you guys. Thank you. And I hope you enjoy listening to this. Um on that note, I think I've end this now, this podcast, this episode. Um tune in for next episode. We are going to talk about recognizing toxicity, knowing your toxic traits and knowing what other toxic traits that you set boundaries on. This is more of setting boundaries, being with the right people, and yeah. But again, thank you for listening. Again, this is Love Girl and Freedom with Adrian Duarte. Boop, 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 boom. <laughs>